Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast in association with Luke Roper. If you use the code TVV20, you will get 20% off everything that Luke Roper has to offer, including this T-shirt that you can't see is from Luke Roper at all because of what we've got up on the screen. But it is from Luke Roper. It's very nice. It's very comfortable. So you should go and get it as well. Some very nice summer sets going on at the moment. I'm your host, Dan Bard, along with Omar tonight. As we're going to do a podcast just kind of catching up because full disclosure, we haven't really been doing very much recently. It all tired off a little bit towards the end of the season for Villa, and it did so for us as well. So I'll take responsibility for that, because we're very, very busy. But we're back now, so we're here just to catch up with what's been going on in the Claret and Blue universe over the last month or so. Hopefully Omar will pop up on the screen any second now. No, he won't. Come on, Adam Bates. Here he is. Hello, Omar. How are you? <laughs> right, mate, yeah. All good. It's been a while, hasn't it? I know. Uh, yeah, all good. Well, good. Looking forward to chatting, Villa, mate, with you. Yeah. It's been it's been too long. Yeah. Let's start then. Today's fixtures announcement day. Something I feel like a few years ago I used to get quite excited about, and then today I wasn't really that asked for some reason. But we've got the first five up on the screen any second now to have a look at. It's a way at Bournemouth. Yeah, I don't, it's a diff, it's difficult. I mean, I, I've seen some people on uh, on Twitter talking about how you know we play every team twice and it's not that important. But I think we we saw we yeah, I think so. I I agree. I think you know we saw Watford last season. I think um, I made this point in our pod last week, although I was quickly um, rebuffed by AJ, who's on our pod, by saying that well we lost to Watford twice, so maybe it didn't matter. But I don't, I think if we hadn't played Watford first game of the season, I think we would have a better chance of getting a result, either a win or a draw. They were obviously well up for it. First, first season back in the Prem, away fans are up, um, sorry, their home fans are up for it. Away games, wasn't going to be difficult. Um, pre-season wasn't ideal, obviously, as well. So I, I think away to a newly promoted size was going to be a difficult first game. I'd, I'd uh, prefer to have a bit more of a mid-table team, to be honest. Um, but it is what it is. And I think we're always going to play away, weren't we? Because of the Commonwealth game. So Yeah, I must I admit that, that had passed me by, even though I'm working on the Commonwealth games, that had passed me by that that would be a reason. Because it does always just feel like, first game of the season, Aston Villa Football Club, they're going to be away from home. Yeah, yeah. It's been... Where's the last home game we played it? I we had one remember. in the Championship. We had Hull at home, didn't we, in the Championship, where Gabby scored in the season. We nearly yeah. went up, but didn't quite. But in the Premier League, I, mm. I can't remember many home games to start a season at all. I can vaguely recall a... a 2-2 game I think it was against Bolton where there was four goals in the first 10 minutes and Kevin Phillips scored in his debut I remember Carlton Cole scoring on his debut one first home game this season against Southampton but there hasn't been too many to be honest in the Premier League they I are mostly it. away really I think I saw someone tweet yeah. earlier that 11 out of the last 12 Premier League seasons we've started off with an away game weren't we due to start this the one season with Man City at yeah, well, Martinez had the penalty replacement yeah, yeah. for United. Was that was that home? Yeah, that yeah. was home, wasn't it? First, that was our, that was home, yeah. that was our yeah, first yeah, game yeah. of the season, but fans couldn't go. But even then, yeah. we got drawn to play an away game first. I think we were supposed to play Man City, but there was a reason, and that ended up being shifted. So we end, actually ended up playing Sheffield United as our first game, but that, that wasn't actually what was scheduled, and fans couldn't come. So for fans to be at Villa Park on the first day of the season just seems to be a massive ask. Yeah, yeah, it was never going to happen, was it? But... Um... I think in terms of running itself, I think it's fairly fairly good running. Uh, sort of running the first five game se- first first five games yeah. of the season. I think I've, I've, I've you know it's not too difficult. I don't think um, it's going to you know every game in the Premier League is hard. Let's not get, let's not get that wrong. You know it's always going to be difficult. But I think in terms of fixtures, I think we've done fairly well. Uh, and it doesn't seem like looking at the rest of the fixtures, it doesn't look like we've got like runs of games where it's going to be really difficult where we're going to you know, struggle to get points. Because points is there's sort of good games in between hard games um so we shouldn't we shouldn't go on long runs hopefully if we if we perform at the level that we can do uh, i think probably the hardest running we've got is at the end of the end of the season i think that those fixtures are probably the hardest but Let's i mean flash yeah. The fixtures up. yeah 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 i think so the, yeah yeah wolves tottenham liverpool brighton i think that's pretty difficult uh difficult end of the season but apart from that i think if you look everywhere else in terms of if you look at month by month i don't think there's any any particular month where it's really really Really, really difficult, I think. Yeah. yeah. 
No. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah 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 of course yeah you don't you just don't know how, you know how the season pans out like i said you know what we played what for the first game of the season we played them middle of the season probably it's a far easier game isn't it and you don't know what the teams are going to be going through they might for example, Southampton are just one one of those teams where they they normally have like a month where they're really good, and then they have two or three months where they're awful. So there's going to be teams like that. Brighton probably be the same. These types of sort of middle of the road teams where they'll have bad months, and if you're playing them, then great for you. You're, you're lucky, and you're playing at the right time. And if they're playing, if you're playing them whilst having a good run, then you know that's that's just bad luck. And it's one of those you don't know which, which way the season's going to go, which teams are going to perform at what what level they're during which month. Um, you just know that. Villa tend to under under certain managers, we've tended to perform badly in certain months. Like Anil was March, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Bruce Bruce was December. So I guess we'll see. Uh, I'm looking forward to it though. Um, I, yeah, I get pretty excited about the fixtures. I, I, you know, just you look out for the normal Boxing Day fixtures. You look at the opening game, just the newly promoted sides. I'm looking forward to playing Nottingham Forest uh, yeah. at home. Uh, last time I went to watch Nottingham Forest at home, we lost. And Stuart Pierce, Stuart Pierce scored a penalty, and Les Seeley was in goal. So, yeah, well, and, and, you're, and you're right. yeah, I was. Yeah, it was one of the first games I went to. I think it was like '94, maybe '95. I think it was. I think I remember the guy. Uh, I can actually now pick, I think I could picture yeah, the guy. Yeah. I was sitting north, I think it was North Stand. I think it was. And I was sitting behind the goal, that's why I remember it so well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the stand, I think it's Colly, I think Collymore was playing, and he absolutely ran us ragged that game. And maybe even, that's one. I think the likes of Brian Boy may have been playing as well. That's how long ago it was. Yeah, pretty, yeah. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. I mean, first home game, Everton. Um, was it you, the season we first came back up? Was Everton our first home yeah, game? Yeah. Then I imagine yeah, that. Yeah. yeah that... Well, no, it wasn't. I don't think it was our first time because we lost to Bournemouth, didn't we? Ah, but yeah. It was, first our, we it was our first yeah. first one since since obviously being relegated yeah. and back up. And I think it was a, that was the atmosphere was. I'll probably yet to see an atmosphere like that at the home game um, since we've been back. Yeah, I thought it was just it was just unreal, wasn't it? Yeah, we of course don't have any derby. Well, we do have a derby games. We play Wolves, but you know what I mean? We don't have our local derby to look out for in the, in the fixture no. list. I mean, God, just when they thought things couldn't get any worse, then their takeovers coming in, and that, that doesn't sound great oh, to, to me. So, did, you, did you hear that interview? I've oh, seen God, it sounds I've awful. seen sound bites. So it could be a while before we end up playing Birmingham City again, unless it's in, no. the, in the cup or a fundraiser. I mean, we're just as likely to play them in a fundraiser at, at the moment. That The way things are going for them, I would seriously worry for their future at the, at the well, moment. Uh, Masters, Masters football's back next month. Apparently, so maybe we'll play them in that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that was coming back. Yeah. That, that's good news. Let's move away from fixtures then, because not really much else we, we can sign them. There, of course, be a few moved for TV in, in, in due course. The Bournemouth one won't move because the TV games for the first weekend have already been decided. Let's catch up then, because quite a lot has happened since we were last on the Villa View. I don't want to dwell too long on this stuff because it is old news, but it's good news, which is a, a good thing. First one, Bubakar Kamara through the door. Finally, Villa have filled that holding midfield of void. And, you know, really, looked like he was going to Atletico Madrid, but by the sounds of things, looked like he was going to end up there. He's been starting for France in their Nations League games, although I don't think France had the best Nations Leagues, a little bit like England. But on a free transfer, a young upcoming player that's in the France national team at the moment, it's a big coup for Villa, isn't it? Oh, yes, massive, massive signing. I think, um, you know, it was highly touted wasn't he um, last year when we were linked with him in January and and summer before um, the likes of, you know, for the likes of Atletico Madrid to be really interested in him and try and sign him shows you the level he's playing at the fact he's starting for France and you know as you say France haven't been great but he stood out I think definitely the first game he stood out as one of their best players and I thought he was unlucky to, to be subbed off at half time because I thought he played fairly well as well in the second game um, but again it shows you the level you know the level we're operating at now um, I'm, I was really shocked we signed him um, I was at first when we when I saw Perslo, Gerard, and Langer at the game, I was thinking, well, this is a done deal. Why would they go to yeah, the game? Yeah, they would be seen so publicly. Obviously, we know yeah. that we have signed him, so it's yeah. easy for us to say. But you wouldn't make yeah, yourself but... so well known, and it'd be so no, public. What, no. and everyone knew what they were doing there as well. It wasn't even like they could cover yeah. up what they were doing. It was clear that they were going to watch Bubakar Kamara mm. play. But he just offers really, from what I've seen of him, 
pretty much everything you would want from a defensive midfielder and probably everything mm. we haven't had. Well, he probably takes a few of Nakamba's good bits and a few of Louise's good bits in there, but he just he uses the ball really well. He can, he can actually get himself out of tight spaces really well. He's relatively physical. He gets around the pitch. He can tackle. He can pass. You know, Gerard said he could play as a, as a DM. He could also play as a, as a number eight. And as a player that's coming into, into the France team now, Villa have signed him on a free. Whatever happens, they're going to get value out of it. And if they ever come to sell him, they will make a profit. Yeah, it's, just, it's a really astute signing. Uh, it's something we don't really associate with Villa, let's be honest. Oh, well, you, see, we you tend say to that, but do... I would say we've no, made I mean, a few we, big I mean, signs recently that I would no, have we said have. Re- no, re- recently, not in terms of um, He's talking like signing. years I think, ago. Yeah, I'm talking of, obviously since probably learner days, you know, in terms of value for money, in terms of uh, beating other teams to the player. Have we had a big Bosman before? I'm trying to think whether we, we've actually been a winner of a Bosman transfer before. I, that's, what that's what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think we've, we, I can't remember, quite remember. I mean, Mika Richards was probably the last high profile free transfer, wasn't he? And yeah, you know how that turned well. out. So I think the fact we've done that, we've beaten Atletico Madrid for the title player. And, and like, you know, the attributes you mentioned there, we've been crying out for someone who's a hybrid of Nakamba and Louise, and, and he just fits that mould. He's probably, and the probably fact more that than was, that as well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think, it's, you know, you've seen his range of passing, you see his ability on the ball and the fact that he started off as a defender, as a centre-back, again, shows you the defensive qualities he has. And I think the, the big thing for me, I think one thing that was missing from Louise's game was anticipation. And you can't really teach that, I don't think. It's very difficult to teach that. Nakamba obviously had it because he was defensively minded, but I think the fact that he started off as a centre-back and you've already, I've already seen, uh, you know, some of the games he played last season and some of the clips as well. You can see he gets himself in the right position when, you know, when the opposition have the ball in the final third, you know, he, he sort of snuffs that danger, which is, again, a, a talent you can't really teach. And for him to have that, I think that's going to, that, that kind of thing you don't really notice in games, um, I think, because if the player gets himself in good positions and, and sort of intercepts the ball, clears it, you just think, oh, it was a bad pass or, you know, he was just lucky to be there. But I think there is a knack, there is a talent to, to have that kind of ability. And I think that will come in uh, really important in certain games. And I think the fact that he's got the ability in the ball when he's spraying those passes, he can play forward and he's looking forward all the time. I think that, again, is the best qualities of Louise, which I think, you know, in, in terms of being able to dictate the play from, from a deeper position, which is the way that we like to play. I think that is a perfect fit, really. Um, well, you know, I, I, no, no signing's ever going to be 100% certainty that they're going to perform. But I think in terms of the value for money, the calibre of player, the fact he's starting for France, the attributes that he has, you know, you couldn't really ask for any more. Well, we, I, I we couldn't, couldn't have made a better, better signing. Oh, I don't think. No, I don't think As so. a defensive referred on, on the realistically... Who are you going to go no. and get that, that, that ticks no. all the boxes that we've just talked about? And it's one of those signings as well. It's going to help the players that play behind him. And it's really going to help the players that play in front, in front of him as well. I've said that about West Ham the last few years with Sue Cech and Rice together as mm. a partnership. They offer so much protection to the defence, but they also enable those in front to play a bit more with a bit more freedom and, and do the things that they're good at. This is what yeah. Bubakar Kamara is going to, going to do for us. He's going to be a massive, massive signing. And he's one that I'm absolutely delighted that we've managed to make. Diogo Carlos as well took everyone mm. by surprise. I knew Villa yeah, were after really. a centre back. That was not the centre back I was alluding to on Twitter. I don't know whether I was sent on a wild goose chase or sent down the garden path, but when he turned up Diogo Carlos, that was a, a complete shock. And that, again, that is how Villa do things at the moment. They like to keep things very, very in house. They like to keep things secret and then just announce it from nowhere. I'm not going to sit here and say I've watched loads of him because I haven't, but I've seen bits and pieces. And again, We've signed a player that probably, I would say, should be signing for a Champions League club and has played in the Champions League and the Europa League. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think he's he's coming off his best ever season as well. Uh, so he's, he's reached his peak as a centre-back. Um, and again, going back to the strategy that we're now employing in terms of, in key, I think in the core of the team, they're looking to you know buy experienced players, but also players who are at their very best already. Uh, rather than buying players who are, say, 23, 22, and then by the, te- by the time they reach their peak, we're then you know, having to fend off the, the top four or other top European clubs and having to sell them at their peak. We're getting them at their peak. And I think it is a risky strategy in some respects, but also it's also an interesting strategy in some respects uh, because we're still buying these younger players. Uh, you know, we've bought the striker from Rangers recently. We're still, we're still looking at the academy. So I think, I, I, I think it's a really astute signing again. Uh, again, going back to your early point, I think the calibre of player, I, I was really surprised, to be honest, that we managed to get him. Because again, Brazilian international uh, playing at, at the top level has been performing excellently last season, season before. I saw quite a bit of Seville over the last couple of seasons and he's, 
he's just rock rock solid, you know, and and he's very good on the ball as well. Uh, is it Lopetago at Seville? He's he's, he's the one yeah. I've butchered his name, yeah. I suspect. But yeah, he's, he's done very well under him, hasn't he? And he's played, played yeah. left centre back. Don't yeah. well yeah. at the moment. I don't know where he's going to going to play for Villa, but you'd think at the moment you, you would look at him and he'd play, be playing right centre back. I would think, but he's he good that so, he's yeah. off. He offers that little bit of versatility that he can play either side, even though he's right footed. He's played a lot of football at left centre back in Nadeba. Yeah, and he's a leader as well. And obviously, I know there's a there's a, maybe a language barrier there. I'm not sure what his English is like, but I think naturally he'll, he'll command a lot. Uh, he'll be good for Martinez. He'll be good for the back four. You know, a lot, we rely a lot on Minks to 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 navigate that back four and comment. You know, command that back four. I think someone like Carlos coming in, um, it's just someone to help Minks and someone of a, a really top level. Uh, playing in that in that position I think yeah just again sh- took me by surprise when I heard the links first I just thought there's no way we're getting this player it's just one it just sounded to me like you know one of those random foreign players that we get linked with every summer where you think it's just not going to happen and the fact that we just out of nowhere just signed him again shows you the way that we do business but yeah I'm no, really really impressed and um, whether you know with the other player that you mentioned whether we were after him as well or not I'm not I'm not too sure but it was definitely an area that we needed to improve on um, and, and an area the way we needed someone who was ready-made, I think. Uh, and I think that's what we've got. Um, a really, really impressive signing again. And, you know, proofs in the pudding. We'll, we'll, I guess we'll wait and see and see how they perform because you know, La Liga is obviously completely different to the Premier League. But I think as a centre-back, he's got the Premier League qualities, the way he plays the game, his aggressiveness, his physicality. Yeah, he's a very aggressive centre-half, isn't it, from what, from what I've seen. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah, one of them ones yeah. that's going to sit back. He likes to get, get tight to players. A little bit like, reminds me a little bit, from what I've seen, of Romero at Spurs. Yeah. I feel like yeah, he moves yeah. about the pitch quite a lot. For, for that, anno- anno- yeah, he, annoying like centre-back. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, definitely. He definitely is. And, I mean, he does give away penalties. Obviously, gave away quite a few penalties last season. But yeah, everyone away against Wolves was... in the Europa League, didn't he? A, a yeah, he did, right? yeah. Red burned him, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I recall. But I mean, he's a yeah. high pedigree. He's played for, played for Brazil. I don't think he's in yeah. the squad at the, the, at the moment, but he's, he's played at the Champions League level. He's played at the Europa League level. He's been linked with a lot of big teams in the past. Newcastle were quite heavily into him in January, but I think he was touted 50 million mid-season. I think Newcastle were touted. That they'll say that they, yeah. they weren't back in from this summer. Who knows? Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't, but it, it's one that Villa, Villa have done. And I think, again, I think this just shows the pull of Steven Gerrard really. I still don't, I'm still not 100% convinced Villa, Villa make these signings without Steven Gerrard because... Like it or not, he is a name. Mm. Yeah, no, definitely, he definitely is. Is what is you know he's one of the top centre backs in La Liga, uh, and I I think you just need to look at how Seville fans reacted as well to the signing to the, to the sale of the player. And Seville are known as a player. They've got Monchi there. They're known as, as players who buy players, um, and make astute signings, and sell them for profit. Yeah, you know, that's, that's how the way they run the business. That's how they operate. Um, and so Seville fans are used to that. So normally, when you see a player leave Seville um, for a uh, big move. Normally fans are a bit more logical in their approach, a bit more rational, I, I think, from what you've seen before. The fact they were really upset and uh, you know, criticised the, 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 the management and the coaching staff and the, and, the, and the team behind the transfers shows you the level that he's played at, the, how important he was to Seville as well. So again, uh, it's not always a good barometer, you know, looking at opposition fans, because we've seen that before where opposition fans have said, oh, what a waste of space this player is and he's come and performed really well. So you, you never know. But I think him being who he was, I think he's a, yeah, really a, just a really good astute signing again. And and I think in terms of value for money again, I think, you know, yes, he's 29. There's no resale value there. But I, I think it's still it's still not a massive hefty price tag in, no, in today's market. Like I so it was think. cheaper than Newcastle were getting quoted in January because I was doing yeah. transfers to for the Athletic in January and I, that, that was in the news. Every single day, mm. the Newcastle were try, trying to get that done, and we're offering 30, 40 million. We, we pulled him in for 26 initially, rising to 32 or 33. So, yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's not, people say it's big money, and it is. But you know, nowadays, that's what 10 million probably was five, 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a, a centre back as well. I think it's completely different. Um, you know, you look at the top centre backs in the world, they're all 30, 31. Yeah. Um, you've seen, you know, the players like Thiago Silva come in still performing at a high level, still commanding big fees. I'm not saying he's at that level or anything like that, but I'm just saying, you know, he if, you, if he gives you three good, really good seasons and gets you into Europe, then it's worth it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you've got, it's not all about, and not every single player needs to be a 23-year-old that you're going to sell for triple the money that you paid for him. I mean, we've tried those got, kind of things before and have not really gone that well. It doesn't always work. Yeah, exactly. And we, the thing is, we've got these academy players now coming through. There's obviously a lot exactly. of emphasis in the academy. 
Uh, and those players, if they ever get sold, they're 100% profit. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think there's some good talent there as well. So if we're doing a bit of both, then I think that's a sensible strategy. Uh, whether it works or not, again, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see. But I, th- I think there's a logic behind what we're trying to do, definitely. It's the, to me, having a mix has always been the strategy that would make the most sense. Why, why yeah. wouldn't that make sense? That the yeah. most logical transfer strategy. If you go all too much one way, that's illogical. But to have a balance, it's like anything in football. If you've got a balance, you probably do okay. So I, I, I like what we're doing at the moment. Rob, yeah, you, yeah. You look at the top teams. You look at Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal, Spurs. Their the team is not. Maybe Arsenal was one exception, but yeah, they've they got a different way at the moment. But they didn't get they didn't they didn't get Champions League at the end of the day. So all the top teams across across Europe, really, they are their core, their squad is made up of players playing at the peak, like 28, 29, 30 years old. Yeah. Um, that's what then they've all got those players. And I think that's what Gerald's Gerald's tried to bring in. He's you know saying, Well, it's all well and good getting these young players, which we try to do in the Dino, which which does work to some extent, but by the time they hit the peak, you'll probably end up losing them. So you're never going to get to the level that you need to get to. Um, and by the fact the fact that we've got these players of this age now and they're at the peak and they're of a certain calibre, I think will probably give us a bit more of a chance to get to that and bridge that gap and get to that top eight, top six position. Whether it happens or not, I guess we'll see. But yeah, I see, I see, I understand the rationale behind it. Yeah. Robin Olsen, of course, has signed as well. Someone I know, Neil Cutler's very, very big on. He's made his loan move permanent. Good for him to settle down because he had a crazy amount of loans. In, in recent years, he'll probably be glad of a little bit of settling and, and a bit of security for his family. So he's joined as well. The released list came out last week. Ashley Young was on it, Omar, but we believe that he has actually been offered a year's contract. So he's mulling that over at the moment, as I understand it. So Ashley Young released at the moment, but could end mm. up coming back. Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I thought he was a shoe to stay, to be honest. And I think he still is. Uh, um, I was really happy we signed him last season. Really, really happy because I love Ashley Young. You know, I think you know me and you are obviously similar age, and we've seen Martin and Neil team in its full glory, and Ashley Young and how important he was. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of nostalgia there, but I think you can see his leadership skills. You can see what he brings to the team off the pitch. It's the mix again, isn't it? Uh, you know, the yeah, veteran, exactly. Every team, yeah, every team's I, got a good veteran. Uh, yeah. Liverpool have got Milner. You know, yeah, Man exactly. City had Fernandinho. Plays, you know, like every team has a, exactly. has a big veteran. Yeah, and he's not not like he's been awful every game. You know, he's I think he's contributed when he's played. He's not been our best player by any stretch of imagination, but he's not he's not our worst player if that makes sense. You know, he's he's just a good solid option, and he can play a number of different positions. So he's a good option, especially now the you know squad, uh, the amount of subs you can have yeah, is no increasing. Yeah, exactly. He's I'll a good option to, to have on the on. bench. Bring on. Yeah, and a lot of these younger players are coming through. The likes of Chuck, the likes of Ramsey, Archer. And these types of players are going to play a more and more prominent role next season. You know, it's important to have these types of players like Young, who's been there and done that, who's gone through the ranks, who's played at Man United, who's played at Inter Milan. Bring on to see games yeah. out, sometimes a bit further yeah. forward. You know, just exactly take that. the wings. Yeah, yeah to no brainer, in, in my opinion, yeah. to, to get him back. Yeah. Hopefully, that that contract will get accepted, and Ashley Young will end up coming back to Villa Park. Now. Oh, well, I suppose the, the the release list. Connor Harahan's left. Obviously, you know someone I know quite well. Disappointed to see him go, but completely understand it. You know, Villa have mm. Villa have come through, and yeah, he said himself when I when I've interviewed him pre- previously, like Villa's a completely different animal to the club when he arrived. But but a great servant and someone that you know he got a lot of love from the fans upon his contract expiring and him being on that release list. You know, over the years we have lost some great characters because of the progress the club has made. Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I mean. I said it to you, and I'm sure you agree. You know, Conor Harran, considering the drops we've signed over the years, um, you know, pound for pound, he's got to be the best, one of the best value signings oh, we've ever made. One point five million, million rising to million, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, you know, he scored double figures in the championship. So important. He comes on against West Brom. You know, I was right behind that goal. It's such an important goal. It's made such a massive difference to us coming up. Without that goal, I don't think we go up at all because it came in such a crucial part of that game. Um, you know, all he's done, in, even in the Premier League as well, you know, uh, I think he's, he's contributed whenever he's played. I don't think he's at the standard. Uh, he wasn't at the standard probably, like, well, he wasn't at the standard last season either. But I think the first two seasons, he was an important player, important part of the squad. I think he was involved in four of the six goals, the last six goals that we scored that kept us up. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. Big exactly. Mo- he was a big exactly. moments player, Connor. Exactly. Come yeah. Yeah. big moments, he'd deliver, wouldn't he? Yeah, it's a bit like, I think a lot of the players that we'll probably see depart, I think, uh, like Satrori as well as another one, I think we may see go. You know, these players, 
again, I think, you know, they're, they're not at the standard that we need, probably need them now where we're trying to get to. But I think at the, the time we signed them and what they've contributed, you know, they're good, solid players. They've done well for the club. They've, they've contributed to the club. You know, they've scored goals. They've made assists. It's not like they've just been signed and, and collected a big wage and never did anything mm-hmm. and never showed good attitude. They've all showed good attitude. They've always been there, an important part of the squad. Um, good, good characters, good personalities. Um, a, a bit of integrity as well, I think, these, these types of players. And I think Connor fits that mould. And, and, you know, really, we, you know, we wish him the best um, and a you know, really, really important part. And these, all these players, the, the likes of Jedinak, Harahan, Trez, if he goes, Al Ghazi, you know, these players, Al Mohamedi, all these types of players have been a really, really important part of getting Villa back to where they belong. Yeah, exactly. And I think we should, we should never, ever forget that. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah, I'm, I can safely say as well, Connor is 100%. A Villa fan for life now absolutely loves the club to death. I'm sure he'll come back and watch games. And I know he really, really appreciates the, the stuff he had on, on Twitter, how, how much love he got. And yeah, just someone who, great character and really, really loves the club. So yeah, it's a shame to see these players go over the year. James Chester, someone that, that you didn't mention. Those yeah. are players that literally yeah, of course, yeah. did so, so much for, for Aston Villa. And like you say, put us back where we think we belong. Now, whilst we've been talking, I've seen Adam Beaver in a way on my, on my screen. There's some film looks like they've released some kit images by the, by the looks of things. I mean, Villa like kids always seem to be the worst kept secret on the internet because we've always seen <laughs> we've always seen them about three months before they've come out. But it's Castor now who've come in and uh and a Villa's kit makers for the for the foreseeable. So this is what they've come up with for the away shirt. I must be colorblind because I think people have said that that's light blue, but it looks white to me. So I've definitely got some no, colour blind really... issues going going yeah, on. Yeah, it's definitely 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 light blue, mate. And I am colour. I am and I am colour blind. So, so, so to be uh, honest, this could be green. Yeah, by what I mean. Could be green. Yeah. Could, could, could be, could be issues there. Probably the worst people to ever yeah. review a kit. I think. Although we did review, we did review the kits last time, didn't we? In the summer, do you remember? I've got no, and, uh, <laughs> we've got no memory. Yeah, we, we, we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did okay. in the summer. I remember it was like a random lunchtime, oh, and neither of us had. And we, we just saw the kiss and we were like, what do we talk about? And we, we tried to pad it out for about 20 minutes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, I, I was actually ITK on this. I know you were, I nearly, said, I nearly said it, but I thought I'd leave it yeah. to you. You told me about this no, about no. 10, 8, Aged. 8, 9 months ago, you told me this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, Castori obviously are getting their name out there, the brand out there. And they're obviously sponsoring in cricket and uh, they're doing a lot with lots of different sports teams and, and trying to make a name. For Andy, it's Andy Murray, isn't it? Andy Murray. Yeah, Andy Murray, yeah, he's an investor, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I think I think they're really nice. I think they're simple. I don't think there's anything. Flash them up on the screen, Adam. Bates. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any, anything controversial there. I think they've tried to be safe. Um, oh, so Villa, but, Villa haven't yeah, released yeah. anything then, because there's a funnier. Uh, yeah. Funny... yeah, yeah, no, it's not Villa. I think okay. it's. Uh, well, I think this is just a random one, but that oh, we'll one probably, before Villa, we'll Villa, be Villa, Villa, Villa report put it on. I think oh, it was okay. like a leak. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if that is the kits. Then you know they're they're nice. I think they're this like obviously the Claren Blue home kit is. Yeah, you see, you see it sort of season in season. It was out, very much like the Under Armour kit that we didn't go up in to me. It was oh, yeah, very, very point, similar to that, to that kit, that put does, the yeah. fly off the feet kit. That, in, in fact, when you said that, the first image I thought of when I saw that kit was James Chester. Yeah, he, that was the first image that came in my head. Can we, so can we have him back up, Adam? Please? Please? Yeah, he's not happy, he's not happy with me making no, demands. Oh no, yeah. How, how dare you ask him to do his job? There we go. <laughs> Yeah, the third, third kit's nice. I think they'll all look. Yeah. I'm sure they'll look all very look. They'll look very nice on professional yeah, athletes yeah. wearing them. Yeah, yeah, third, yeah, third shirt. It's a bit different. I like the third shirt probably out of all of them because it's a bit different. The others feel a bit similar to things that we've had in the last four yeah, or five yeah. years. Whereas the the away the third shirt, sorry, there feels very very different. Like I've just said, the home reminds me of that Under Armour kit. The away reminds me of the light blue away kit that Kappa did the first season we were in the Premier League. Mm. Pretty sure we've had a yellow and an orange goalie top recently. And then the third we, always, one, we always have yellow and orange yeah. goalie top. Third one's nice, yeah. different. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's 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 not it's um safe. I would say is the word I would use, and uh, not controversial at all. It's it's just yeah, it's nice. I, I don't. I think they're more than that. To be honest, I don't think they've tried to do anything too spectacular. No. Um, but yeah, like I say, I, it will look better on the players, and I'm sure when they of do course. the promo stuff, it'll look really nice. And hopefully, the fit's better than Kappa ones because you have to buy a I've, size up. For I've heard it's pretty similar. I could be Is wrong, it? but I've heard it's pretty similar. Yeah, God, don't know why they make stuff. that. Yeah. I'll be interested to see the prices as well. I might have to uh, book in an extra PT session a week to uh, get, yeah, my, yeah. get myself ready for the Villa, Villa kits coming out because I think Castor like Kappa again, I'm right. completely wide of the market. Yeah, I believe yeah. they do player fit and then just the normal fan fit as well but I always like to get the player fit 
which is to my detriment, really, because I always think, no, mate, you look fatter than you are. But, yeah, I'm sure that's what I'll... Well, I, I don't know the cats, kids, kids matter that much. I think the, the, the kit that I've liked the most in recent years is probably the one that we got relegated in, which was the away yellow one that we beat Bournemouth. Like and I really better, like... like that better than the, the kits that the sponsor of this show had. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, the, the Luke, the Luke home, no, the Luke course. home, no, the Luke home and away shirt is on a, is on a different sphere. Like oh, it's yeah. the, the, the best kits we've ever had since the early nineties, I think, um, to be honest. But I think in terms of other kits that we've had, I think, you know, the Kappa ones, the Macron ones, Under Armour ones, they were all sort of much of a muchness. Um, but I thought that yellow kit was really nice for them to end up getting relegated in it. But I mean, those, those Luke kits will, will just, will never be touched. I think um, it, I just can't see how they will be because one was obviously the fact that a fan was designing them, yeah. but also the style, the away shirt, I like weave more than the home, home shirt. The white honest. one. Yeah, the white one. I think it's the, probably the, the classiest kit. I like the third had. one because of the Rotherham game. It just reminds me. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah. I love that shirt. I've not got that shirt, the third one, actually. I would, wouldn't mind getting that, but I'm sure it's hard to get. But yeah. Big, big well, name drop here, but I can't resist. I've got Conor Harahan's Rotherham, Rotherham shirt. That you wore Have you? In that game. Yeah, the third oh, Wow. It does, not good... fit, it does not fit me because it is an extra small, so I can't really wear it, but I've, but I've got it. Does he wear extra small, Connor? Yes, he's, he he's quite a tall guy, isn't he? Nah, he's not. He's, I'm taller is he than not? him. I'm 6'1". I'm, I'm a fair bit taller than him, to be, to be oh, fair. Really? Yeah. It's oh, a bit, really? I, love, I love that show. That's probably one of my favourite shows we've ever had. But talking of kits, like, other than the Luke kits, I can't think of anything I've ever been wowed by since Reebok. Even the Nikes, I didn't, wasn't a massive fan of the Nike kits. I think, I think they're a bit overrated, personally. They were, yeah. The I, I like the first thing was obviously great. Yeah, yeah. Like I like the shirts. first, yeah. first Nike kit. You know, the one that we not the first was the first one when when we signed Marlon Harewood and oh, those were I've got, I've got a I've got a, one of those kits with Harewood on the back. Yeah, yeah, I like those. I like those kits. But you're right; they were sort of fairly fairly safe. Although I did like the the black one, you know, with the red and uh, uh, Claren blue and red, a uh, Claren blue and um, sort of checkered. So yeah, I they were the best night. Well, they were actually the best night ones, like those oh, ones, one. but they weren't released until about four months after the season had started for some for whatever reason. There was a problem, problem with the factory. We also seem to have problems with kits and release them late as well. But like most teams Always. have got their kits out at the moment. We don't, we don't know when ours could be. Ours hasn't even been like actually probably it's probably contractual to be fair, because the Kappa deal probably hasn't technically expired yet. They probably can't do anything with the Castor ones yet. I know they've announced that it's going to be Castor, but they have they probably actually can't do anything legally. At the moment, which is a, a little bit frustrating because you, you know you like to get your new shirt as soon as possible. But, but Castor did some nice stuff with Wolves last year. I liked the Wolves black away shirt, so I think their training yeah. stuff's quite good quality as well and quite, and quite nice. So we'll see what they release with that. Because I think one thing I will say about Kappa, I did think their training wear was very very good, and their match day wear, I thought thought that stuff yeah, yeah. was really good. And, and more more and more people are wearing are getting training wear these days. I think. Yeah, you like to pretend you're a football well, not me personally. Yeah. I like to go to the gym and pretend I'm a professional footballer. The players yeah. below wearing wearing full full I training. I can't wear I can't wear football kit to do any sort of physical activity. I just I mean that's what it's there for. Come, I know, but I can't get comfortable in it. That's just yeah, mm. weird thing. Like playing football, we had a recent tournament at work, and it was like, oh, we'll wear red because there was Man United Liverpool fans, and we, there was three of us who were Villa fans, mm. and they were like, oh, you can wear your Villa kit, and I didn't say it any other time, but I was like, no, I just I can't wear Villa proper Villa kit to play football in. I prefer like just a normal gym Con- T-shirt. Controversial. Anyway, yeah, topic, but, yeah, let's yeah. move away from these hard hitting topics that we're talking about right now. <laughs> let's look at what we think might be coming up transfer wise then for Villa. Yeah. My feelings and the word on the street from people I've spoken to is I think there might be three more by the, by mm. the sounds of it, possibly a fourth a, a push in a certain position. But I think it's pretty obvious that we probably will look at a striker. It's not going to be Luis Suarez anymore by the sound of things. I don't even know if that was a genuine thing, but it, it sounds like now that's something that would have been completely abandoned if it ever was a thing. A number eight and a young backup left back, they seem to be the three positions that I think are going to get filled from, from what I'm hearing. So what would you like to say? Yeah, I think I think, um, I think think we definitely need a number eight. Um, I think we need competition for McGinn and Ramsey. I think yeah, if you can get a number eight, like the... you've got McGinn and Ramsey rotating or rotating with another number eight. We're in a lot healthier position than we were last season, where they pretty much played every yeah, game. Exactly. And I think Ramsey never thought he, at the start of the season he'd be playing the amount of games that he did, although it was warranted. He was, you know, obviously performed really well. But I think towards the end of the season, you could see he was struggling a little bit more and he wasn't as consistent as he was earlier in the season. But I think the likes of maybe Louise Sanson. You know, maybe out the door as well. Yeah, so I, I think, think we Louise, definitely do need. I think Louise is going to be a bit, not in, not in trouble. He's got a year left on his contract. 
you know, yeah, I think he's probably one that Villa could make a bit of money on. Yeah, that's yeah and if he's, he's probably going to go. If he's not going to sign a deal, you know, it's probably a good time to sell. And I, I do think, as much as I love Louise, he's one of my favourite players. I think now we've got Kamara, you've got McGinn and Ramsey, where does he fit in? Uh, you know, he's always been one of these players. He's not quite a six, he's not quite an eight. Mm, so I'd like to, have, um, I'd like to, personally, I'd like him still there and sign a number eight. And I was a bit greedy. But I just think if you look at the way Liverpool rotate their central midfielders, that really helps them because you're always bringing in fresh mm. legs to an extent because they can just they mm. can just rotate. They've got obviously their their base of Fabinho, Henderson, and Thiago mm. is their three midfielders. Then you know Cater comes in and plays a few games. Curtis Jones comes in and plays a few games. They've got Milner as well. Sometimes Henderson will play at the base and I'll play someone else. They had Von Eldham a few years ago. You know they had real strength and depth. In that number, in that number eight position, and I just think it's such a crucial position. I think if you, you know, if you want to have a big, if you want to have a, a successful time, I think you need options at fullback and number eight because they're the most energetic positions on the pitch. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think we, we definitely need a player. It's what kind of caliber of player do you go for? Do you go for a big? Uh, do you go for uh, a big signing with a hefty transfer fee? Do you go for someone younger? Do you go for someone who's a little bit more experienced who? maybe been around a while, but can sort of uh, dip in and out of teams and, and rotate with McGinn and Ramsey. Uh, it's, it's an interesting one. I personally think it's a long, no, number six was the, was the most important position. We, we filled that. Then it was centre back and we filled yeah. that. Whether we need another one, I guess we'll see. But I think number eight is probably the next on the priority list for me. And I'd like to see someone of, of a really decent calibre because I think we can't rely on McGinn and Ramsey every game because they will have bad games. We saw that last season and we just didn't have any other options. And Sanson, as much, as much as I think he's a good player and I think whenever he's played, he's, he's looked pretty good. I don't think Gerard fancies him and I think he'll be out. There's durability problems there as well with Sanson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Injuries as well, yeah. So then you're thinking, Chuck, uh, will he sign a new contract? He's obviously another option. Is he more of a 10? Um, you know, it, it looks like Rob Burnham is uh, going to go to QPR on loan yeah. Um, yeah. as well. So, you got Nakamba who's more of a six. So uh, yeah, I think I I, I I think you know that that's probably next position. And then striker is an interesting one. It's a really interesting one because obviously Watkins and Ings are first choice. We have played a lot with both of them in the same team. So we definitely, definitely need a third striker. Is Archer the man for that? Or do we need another striker? I personally would keep Archer in and around the squad. I think if you um, sign someone though and you're keeping Ings and Watkins, I think you let him go and learn and have a whole season in the championship. That's yeah, yeah. It depends, it depends who you, Depends who you sign. But I think if we are going to sign someone, then they need to be better than what, what the Inks. I think that. That's, I think that's, that's what they're amazing. trying to do. By, by the sounds of it, the people they're looking at, I would say, I would class it as ambitious. The, the, the players yeah. that, I've, that I've heard, we are looking at in, in the number eight position. And that's the striker. I would say it's good, good ambition. You might not be able to get them through the door, but you know it's intent and you're having a go. And like, like we've we've said before, the players that we've signed really, we finished 14th in the Premier League. I've got mm. any right to be pulling in Luca Dean, Kamara. Carlos and uh, Coutinho. Coutinho. Uh, yeah. We've got no right to be doing that. I'm sorry, not not a 14 yeah. in the Premier League, but we've done it. No, no. So that you know, no. they're looking. They want they want players with the real deal that are better than, than, than what they've got. So you know, I know I know they're looking at number eight and and, and a striker, and I know they're, they're looking to go relatively big as well. But if they don't, if they don't get who they want, they won't do it. They've shown they, they've yeah. shown that with defensive midfielder. In all honesty, if there's not the right yeah, player, yeah. and they can't get them. They just simply will not do it. They won't buy for the sake of it. And again, good mentality in my opinion. And it's, I mean, it's worked out with Kamara really, hasn't it? If you think about it, because, yeah. you know, yeah, if we'd signed him last year, when we would finish maybe 10th, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference really. I said, I don't think, I think. Whereas I mean, I think we season, wouldn't have been able to sign him a year ago. I wouldn't have thought. True, true. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But in January, we would have to spend big money on Basuma or him. Um, I think, and obviously Basuma's going to Spurs now. But yeah, I don't think we were ever I, after I, him this summer. I know, I know we were looking no. in January. I think 50 yeah, yeah, million we were yeah. quoted and he's obviously going to Spurs for around 25 now, but Which I is, don't think he's been on our radar at all this summer. No, and he and he is an, he's more of an eight, in my opinion, Basuma as well. Uh, I know people think he's a defensive midfielder, but he really isn't. Um, he doesn't play that position. Yeah, box to box, really, getting around the pitch, I would yeah. say. Yeah, you yeah, limit him exactly, what he's good yeah. at if you plan him as a defensive midfielder, in my opinion. Definitely, definitely. And I think, um, yeah, I guess, I guess we'll see. But if you look at around the squad, I think right back, we've got Cash, be interested to see if um, Kessler Hayden is he's kept there. Kessler Hayden. I think Kessler, I think Kessler Hayden. I, I personally would would keep him there and play him in the cup games. I think this is a chance because who else? Gilbert probably going to go, isn't he? He's not going to come back and play. Then you've got 
you've got Chambers as well, can play right back, Conza can play right back. So you've got Chambers, Conza and Carlos now for the right centre back position. You've got Mings, House, does he stay? I guess we'll see. I'm not too sure. Conza's injury, maybe. I would guess. Yeah. And then, but, but you need a left centre back and I suppose Carlos can play there, can't he, as well. And then left back, yeah, I think the like you know you've seen different different people left linked. Back be, a, be, left back will be a, a prospect. I don't think it's going to be they're bringing in a high class already yeah. there. Left back, it, it'll be someone who's young. I think to be to maybe be from champ, maybe from championship or yeah, something like that. Someone maybe. to be comp- not competition for Luka Dane, but push him. But Luka Dane is obviously yeah. you know we spent big money on him. He's the number one left back. We're not any European competition. So, you know, if you're the number one left back, you're the number one left back. But it's good to have another option in there. Because, again, when he didn't play, you know, Ashley Young did OK. But you you could see the difference toward the end of the season in, with Luca Dane left back. I thought he ended the season very, very strongly. Yeah, and I, I think um, we don't necessarily, I think a lot of it depend on outgoings as well. We don't necessarily need anyone else desperately. Although I would definitely want an eight and a striker as, as a priority. But if we didn't get them, then, I mean, it wouldn't be Villa without going into at the end of a summer transfer window without needing one more player. I think mm-hmm. every season I can remember us, we've always needed one more player and uh, we've never got them. So it's just, if it, you know, it is what it is. But I, I think, yeah, I think we'll get, you know, we've signed, I think with fans as well, we've signed players so early on before the transfer windows even open that now it's quiet. Uh, you, we'll probably see fans get frustrated because other teams they will now do their surely, business. surely by the nature of the but, as well. But I'm telling you, I, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. But people forget <laughs> It's just, you know, you'll see other teams like Spurs or all the lead signing players now because we've, we've been we've been good. Yeah, be Leeds have done a similar success. thing to us, I would say. A bit cheaper. Yeah, They're true, yeah. Good players true. through the door, Leeds. Yeah, but, you, but you, will, you will see maybe a quiet period for Villa because obviously Gerrard's on holiday. Players are going away on holiday after Nations League. Um, I think you'll probably see a quiet period over the next two or three weeks. Yes, for Villa Gerrard's well. having dinner with Will Ferrell. I know, I saw that, yeah, yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it's, it was always going to be a quite a few weeks. Now people, even in football, they yeah. take holidays. Even people like directors and chief execs and things like that, they, they take yeah. holidays. So there was a, Villa got a lot of business done quite clinically, which is, was very impressive. Now there'll be a lull and then it then it will pick, pick up again, like, like, like I've said, with, with the players that I think that they'll, they'll be looking at in the, in the positions that we've mentioned. I think centre-back was another one. I think they potentially were looking at another centre-back, but I, I'm not sure that that's happening. Anymore, yeah. I don't think they'll be going. I mean, ba- Bassi would have been, now. Bassi would have been good, but I think he's, he's far too expensive for someone who's not going to be first what? choice. Yeah, he's not going to be first choice. He's played in Scotland, albeit performed well in the Europa League as well. It's a lot of money for someone who's unproven, really. I d- again, I don't level. think that was everything. Anything that Villa were looking at, to be honest, I think it was just yeah. a. Oh, he played under Gerard. He's done yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Villa might want a centre back. Let's link him with Villa. I, d- I don't think there was ever anything in that. To be perfectly honest, there were some changes in the backroom. Well, there was a change in the backroom staff as well. Michael Beale decided to take on the Queen's Park Rangers job. I've got a friend who's a QPR fan. He's really annoying and it quite annoyed me when Beale took that job because I had my friend goading me all day that he was all going to fall apart at Villa. But then again, exactly the same. <laughs> Villa act with just absolute precision yeah. and pulling a championship manager who has done a very, very good job at Blackpool, Neil Crichley. Crichley, Crichley. Mm. Critchley, Critchley, yeah. No, Critchley comes in, just comes in with great pedigree. He's well renowned at being an excellent coach. I don't think he's quite as into all the all the tactical side of things and shape as Beal, but he's going to come in and offer an awful lot to the football club. Greg did a piece on the Athletic going through his career and what he offers and stuff, and I, I, I was impressed with what I read there. Yeah, and and he's you know he's got a distinct style of coaching as well, which I think is the reason why we've. Um... We've got him in, and um, he loves coaching. Really, That's the driving thing yeah. there. That he's left the yeah. job at Blackpool because he loves coaching so much, and he just wants to work mm. with this high class of player in the Premier League. Mm. Yeah, it's it's a it's a coup, really. Um, I think I think Neil said it, didn't he? I think he, he mentioned it online. I think he did a good piece on it as well. Um, and I just I was shocked to be honest, more than anything else, that the fact we got a manager of a team that's done well with no money. Yeah, Blackpool fans are uh, devastated. Uh, Devastated, black fans are dev- absolutely devastated, and I think um, it'll be interesting to see how we shape up because I think Michael Beale had a really particular way of playing and a particular. He, had a, he, he was a very principled man when he came to coaching. You, you know, he had the. I don't know if you remember seeing the stuff he had in terms of the types of midfielders. He, you know, he named the different types of midfielders that he would always play, um, and how he saw the attributes, and, and he was very particular about the way that he wanted to play as well. Now we've got someone completely different, and Gerard is more. Uh, uh, an old school manager, I would say, more the of a man manager. manager. Situation. Yeah, the fact that we've got a coach who plays, who might play in a different style, different way, 
be interesting to see how the players adapt. Yeah, it sounds like he's mixed it up a bit at Blackpool. Sometimes they'd be they'd yeah, be four four two. Sometimes they'd be four three three. Like that, they'd mix things up a bit and, and change it around definitely. at Blackpool. So I, I think I, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting when Bale left, but it, it certainly wasn't that. No, not at all. No, I, I, yeah, I thought to be honest, I thought we'd get some sort of foreign coach or something like that. Um, I don't know why I thought that, but because um, straight away, for some reason, Javi Alonso was linked, which was never ever going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah, exactly. Yeah. He... yeah, it was a surprise. It was a, it was a name. I think uh, players even uh, people had talked about Chrisley as a potential manager option when uh, Smith left, uh, as like a left field option mm-hmm. as a potential sort of one for the future. And the fact that we got him in as, as coaches again shows you the, the way that we're operating. You know, the signings that we've made. I think last preseason, I think we probably saw. Not the worst of Villa, but I don't think we saw us at our best in terms of behind the scenes, in terms of the coaching, in terms of uh, you know, just a very disjointed uh, season for a variety of reasons. Loads of things ended up happening, and it it just ended up being a disjointed season, and that's why we finished fourteen. Whereas this season, I think there's a bit more of a determination. You can see there's a real focus, I think, throughout the club to to make the, make this work to actually achieve something. And whether it happens or not, I guess we'll see. But you can see the right right intentions are there throughout the club, both at the top and and, and the players themselves. And I think it bodes well for the new season. Uh, and I'm just looking forward to I'm looking forward to seeing the way that we play, how we adapt. He's a very attacking manager, uh, attacking coach from from what I read, uh, Chris Lee as well. So. Uh, again, be interested to see how we play uh, and how the players how how the players fit into that formation or the style that he plays as well. Yeah, Gerard. You know, people will, on the face of it will say, "Well, these people coming in aren't the manager." But the way Gerard operates, everyone's got their own thing, and they're all equally as important, really. Yeah. So exactly. yeah, it's, it's a good appointment. It seems like it seems like an excellent appointment, as good a an appointment as we could have hoped for. You know, when I'm saying Kamara's the best we could have done. For a defensive midfielder, he's like above and beyond what we should be doing. I'd probably say the same. Pulling in a manager who's done well in the championship as a number two. Mm. I think that's an unbelievable bit of business for Aston Villa Football Club. I think that does us. Uh, Marinus, is there anything else you would like to discuss? I can't think of it. I did send you a list earlier, no. didn't I? But I think we've, yeah, co- yeah. we've covered everything. I think we covered it. Yeah, yeah. I think we covered it. I think yeah. there'll be, be plenty of plenty of stuff that we can discuss over the summer anyway. I think the likes of Archer, Davis, what happens with Chuck. Um, yeah, I think, you know, that's a big thing as well. Villa are going to, Villa are actually good, probably going to make some money with selling yeah. players, which is unheard of. In, in unheard of, and 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 obviously and the lad that went for well. hundred million, that was quite good. But you know yeah. they're going to, they're going to make some money. But like Kane and Davis is low, it's an excellent loan from Villa's point of view because Villa, mm. Villa a year ago are not getting ten to fifteen million pounds for Kane and Davis. Now, no now way. they will. We saw with when we had to sign Mings from Bournemouth because he'd done so well for us. We had to pay at the time that was an inflated fee. I would say for someone who hadn't played much in the Premier League, we're going to find ourselves yeah. being the right end of that now because Forrester probably going to have to pay an inflated fee to get Kane and Davis in now because he was so integral yeah. to what they were doing. So we're going to be the benefactors mm. of that now. Whereas, you know, when we went up, we saw the other end of it. Mings has been great for us, but we had to overspend to get him in and Forrest will have to do the same now. Again, another thing you don't associate with Villa as well. You know, you see Spurs do it so often. I think Chelsea do it so often. And Chelsea are very good. Low, the loan players oh. out, they're performing, they're selling for good money. Villa, when, when's the last time we, you know, we had a loan player do well and sell them for good money? I can't, you know, we had the other likes of Darren Bent and Stephen Ireland, Hutton, Given, you know, these types of Zogbia, these types of players going out on loan and sort of uh, that, stinking up, sticking up with the job. Alan Hearn, Rami Orca loan was the making of him. Back, back, back again yeah. after a stint in La Liga. Old Huts didn't Could have been, yeah. he, was, he was back Could on have been, after, yeah. after that. You know, Chelsea will look at some of their loans they've sold in the last few years, so that they've sold permanently, and they'll think, hmm, won't mind them back. But I don't yeah, think they'd mind true. Tamori now. They're certainly low on centre backs for a team that played no, three centre backs. No. Gay at Palace yeah. as well. They probably wouldn't mind him back either. So yeah, you know, it can work yeah. that way as well. But that does true. do us. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this show. Our first foray back in for a while. We'll try and make it a more regular thing now. When something happens, we will do a show because that's what being a fan channel is all about, of course. Thanks to Omar for joining me. And thanks to Bates as well for his producing and his throwing his light graphics together as whilst we were doing the show. Thanks to Luke Roper as well for continuing to sponsor us. If you use the code TVV20, you get 20% off everything on their website. So go and take a look and treat yourself to a new summer wardrobe basically we'll probably be back next week or if something happens before then we'll come back before then and talk about it but yeah as always up the villa up the villa